fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger, so... Go do what you want to do. Life is short. Play all out. Just enjoy. Relax. Move to California or New York or wherever you want to live because I truly think that one of the only things people really regret in middle age and beyond is not moving, which is a metaphor for staying in the same place too long. If I'm not getting any younger, just fully embrace and appreciate everything I'm surrounded with now. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people, just like you, who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, and today's episode is beyond special to me because guess what? It is episode 100. I cannot believe we made it to this milestone. It has been such a labor of love. I have enjoyed every single guest we've had on this show, the advice they've given you, the words they've said that have changed my life, and most importantly, you. You, the listener, even if you've been listening for a day or for months or since episode one, I have to thank you so much because without you, well, the work would be much harder. One of my favorite parts of having this podcast has been interacting with you over the years. In the past two years, the past 100 episodes, we've had close to 10 meetups all around the country where listeners have come together, have become friends, and have helped each other out. We have our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, which has close to 1,500 people hanging out in there, chatting, offering people advice. People have gotten their dream jobs by reaching out to that group and just putting out there what they want from the universe. It's been so incredible watching this show just grow and expand and have your ears for so long. We're not going anywhere. And today's episode, I did an Ask Me Anything where listeners sent in questions that they wanted to know from me. We're at episode 100, and this is the chance to really get to know my voice, who I am, and some of the things that you might not know about me. Let's jump right in. Question number one comes from Marissa. Marissa wants to know, Jen, hey, where are you living right now? I know that sounds like a pretty obvious question, but for two years, and when I started this podcast two years ago, I was living in a new city every month, living out of a suitcase. My fiance, Adam, and I, we sold all of our belongings in August of 2017, and we spent two years without a home. We traveled with a suitcase, and we lived in a brand new city every single month. I started this podcast in LA. That's where I was living at the time. I got the idea, and I decided to put it into motion before my 30th birthday. Currently, and as of earlier this year, Adam and I decided to put a little bit of a stop on that every month new city thing. It was a great two years of living on the road, but we wanted to have some consistency in our life. We wanted a little bit of change, and what better way to change than giving up the suitcases for an apartment? So currently, right now, we are living in Brooklyn, which has been amazing. It's been really awesome because I have a routine now. You know, before it was the routine was you enter a city, you keep your clothes in the suitcase and at the 20th 20th day mark we would sit down and figure out where to go next and there was a lot of stress but it was also a lot of fun but living in one place is really fun too because now we can have hobbies we can see friends we can have restaurants we like to go out to walks we like to take so we've made the most of living in one place the next question is, hey Jen, what's one thing you are hiding from us? Ooh, that's a tough question. This question came from Sarah. 
Sarah, to be honest with you, one of the things I'm currently working on that I haven't really talked that much about is pitching a book. The book, Finally the Bride, which is about my experience having people vote on my wedding, which is currently still happening. And I'm trying to pitch that to publishers. I was going to self-publish the book on my own. I have had a book self-published before. I've had a book published by a massive publisher before. And I decided before I went the self-publishing route, I'd pitch it to publishers. And it's quite a process. In nonfiction, it's pretty different than fiction. In nonfiction, you don't have to write the whole book yet, but you have to put together this gigantic book proposal that basically says, hey, here's everything I plan to do with the book in terms of writing it and marketing it. And I put together many of these before. So I put together like a 40 page one, you work with your book agent, and then your book agent just goes off and pitches it to publishers. And as of right now, it has been rejected by six publishers. There's still more out there, but that's the thing about being an author. It only takes one person to say yes. And if you care about your idea enough, you have to vow to say yes to it yourself, which is what I'm currently feeling and currently doing. But that's something I'm hiding from you is the fact that I am currently facing rejection for a project that I am madly in love with. Next question is from Marcy. Marcy says, hey Jen, tell us more about your engagement. Well, my partner Adam and I, we got engaged in July of 2019. I didn't see it coming. We were home in Florida and he wanted to go to the beach. We always go to this spot on the beach. It's a spot where I grew up and also where ironically his grandparents used to live. So we went to that spot and as we're walking on the beach, Adam pulls me closer to him and I see a photographer there with all this wonderful, cool stuff. And I say to Adam, oh my God, wow, it's so cool. We're here for someone else's engagement. And he pulled me closer, walked me toward the photographer, got down on a knee, told me that it's been an incredible adventure getting to this point and proposed. Now, since then, it's been an interesting thing planning the wedding because as a bridesmaid for hire, I've been to hundreds of weddings in my life. So that's why I created the website Finally the Bride where thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have been voting on this wedding, which has been really cool. I mean, I'm letting them vote on everything from where to get married to what to wear to should there be an open bar and spoiler alert, 99% of people voted yes. And yeah, I am going to listen to what people vote on. Whatever they decide, I am going to do. One of the questions up there is where should I go on my solo bachelorette party? No matter where you choose, I will go. So hey, choose wisely. But I know that sounds weird and scary for most people. But for me, it's honestly the only way I can plan a wedding. I've just seen too much. I'm indecisive and I've let strangers, well, strangers have let me in their wedding for the past five years. Why not let strangers plan my wedding? And that's why I decided to do it. And votes open and close all of the time. So if you haven't voted yet, I'm begging you to vote. Jen, this is a question from Stacy. Stacy says, Jen, how do you constantly deal with rejection? Well, Stacy, it keeps me up at night, but I heard a quote the other day from Barbara Corcoran. She's the one from Shark Tank, the real estate mogul. And her tweet said, my friend Bonnie sent this to me. Her tweet said, rejection is my lucky charm. And I could not agree more because when we get rejected, we simply have to change our entire mindset from, oh, they said no to us to, okay, we got a response. We got in the door. What's next? And learning that has allowed me to take rejection very seriously, but in a positive way. Rather than looking at the rejection and going, oh, this is never going to happen, I look at the rejection and I think, what's one actionable thing I can do? So even right now, when publishers are rejecting the book, they're kind enough to write you a reason why. And I'm taking all those reasons and I'm refining the book proposal and I'm making it better. So when you get rejected, whether it's on a date or for a job or for a project you're trying to do, take it seriously, but take it in a different direction than you usually would. The next question is from Erin. Erin says, hey Jen, I haven't had any luck in the dating world. I've been trying to date for years and I can't get past a second or third date. I want to give up. What should I do? Erin, I feel you. I wrote an entire book called All My Friends Are Engaged because I was constantly the single one. And as a single person, you, you don't want to hear advice. You don't want people to tell you what to do. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I am going to tell you what to don't do, which is give up. 
because the crazy thing about love is it finds you when you truly least expect it and giving up telling yourself that's never going to happen is a way for you to mentally block out anyone you could meet when you least expect it so my advice to you would be not to give up not to make any kind of crazy change like deleting your dating apps or refusing to leave your house and see people and instead you know maybe just think of one little change you can make in your week so that you have more access to people i i really believe this to my core that dating is a numbers game when i met adam i went on 15 first dates in one month he was date 15 and i don't expect anyone to do that i don't advise anyone to do that i obviously take everything to the extreme but what I will say is open up your eyes a little bit more, say hi to people a little bit more, talk to the people around you, because you never know who they are, who they know, or what could happen just by looking around the world a little bit more and maybe even getting off the apps a little bit more. So don't give up on dating because giving up on dating isn't going to help you. It's not to say that being single is a bad thing. Being single is freaking amazing. But if you do have that desire to meet someone and have a partner, you don't want to give up. So take that phrase out of your vocabulary. That would be the place I would start. This is a question from Brenda. Brenda says, hey, Jen, you have a lot going on. How do you stay motivated? Ooh, Brenda, that is hard. I would say that I like to reward myself with things. So when I have my to-do list, what I usually do is I break things up by day and I'm a morning person. So I can bust things out early in the morning, but then by like four o'clock, five o'clock, I am so burned out, I'm fried. And that's usually the time when I have something really important to take care of. So what I'll do is I'll reward myself. So I'll say, Jen, you know, if you finish this, if you do half of this, then you can have X, Y, and Z. And sometimes that's an hour of watching Netflix, Sometimes that's a pizza slice or a dessert, something that tells me there's a finish line and here's what you get when you cross it. And why that helps me is because I am not a runner. I Running is just something that I do, but it's hard. I'm not going to say I can't do. And every time I run a 5K, I run a 5K once a year for Memorial Day weekend. I always tell myself, okay, if you cross that finish line, they have the best snacks waiting for you. Like they have juice and muffins and bagels. So I run for that. That is what gets me across the finish line. I don't run for the medal or for the picture or so I can post it on Instagram. I run for the freaking snacks. So do something that's gonna motivate you by giving yourself a reward. Something small, but something that you really, really want. Jen, what is your favorite quote? This is a question from Casey. Casey, I've had the same favorite quote for quite some time. It's simple, it's easy, and it's never, never, never give up. The world will try to get you to stop doing what you love. The world will call you crazy. The world will even tell you, just give up. But you have to commit to yourself, tell yourself, force yourself to just keep going, even when times are tough. You know, even with this podcast, for example, there was a moment in the past two years where I really wanted to give up. I had some crazy things happen in life and it it was hard to come on the microphone and have personality and energy. But I told myself there will be a time when I will feel better. I will feel strong again and I will look back and regret giving up on this show. And that's when I really had to push myself, be genuine to myself, but push myself to show up. And if you keep showing up for yourself, you will find a whole new sense of self-confidence, self-worth, and self-love. So, Casey, and everyone else listening, never, never, never give up. Hey, Jen, what keeps you up at night? This is a question from Kim. (sighs) You know, I would have to say it is the worry of the day. And it's not even a worry that keeps me up at night. It's the length of my to-do list. I have so much on my to-do list every day that it would be impossible to get it done unless I had zero distractions and maybe an extra three hours. So I think when I go to sleep, I'm mostly worried about everything I didn't do. But my dreams are so weird. And I go back to the dream episode I had a couple of months ago on the show where the person told you that your dreams have meaning. Your dreams have extreme meaning. And oftentimes my dreams are reflections of the day that I just lived and the stress of that day. So that keeps me up at night are those unpleasant dreams when I wish I was dreaming of like a world where you just ate pizza every second. So I think it's less anything significant, like what's going to happen to me and all of that. And it's more just like 
the worry that I'll never have enough time in the day to do everything. Okay, that was deep. But thank you for that question, Casey. I love it. Jen, what's one thing that makes you happy? This is a question from Dawn. Dawn, what makes me the happiest, aside from spending time with family and animals and pizza, is adventure. I live for adventure, and I work really hard during the week, like all of you, but I love a Saturday where I wake up really, really early, and with Adam, we walk. We walk like 15 miles, and we just don't have an adventure plan, but we make it fun. We stop different places, we eat a lot of food, and we just explore. I think that that's what makes me feel relaxed and reset and refocused is one day a week where we have some sort of adventure. That's what makes me the happiest. I live for adventure, not like skydiving adventure, but just simple walks around, explorations, the unknown, meeting new people kind of adventures. The final question comes from Maria. Maria says, congratulations on 100 episodes. Tell us what is happening next with the show. Well, the show is still going strong, Maria. I am excited that we are on to episode 100 and we are going to make it to 200. Thanks to all of you. I'm always open to suggestions. If there are guests you want to hear, if there's anything you want different with the show, hit me up. You could email me directly, listeners, jenglance at gmail.com. You can send me a DM on Instagram at jenglance. You can come finally hang out with us in the you're not getting any younger facebook group talk to me there and check out our website anyyounger.com you'll find show notes you'll find info about our guests you'll find books to read all that fun stuff and other than that what i can say is thank you thank you all so much for making this show what it is i started this show with you for you and it has just been been the most incredible experience podcasting for this audience and for you and I look forward to to doing this for forever and for quite a long time and nothing makes me happier than interacting with you so please say hello and please let me know how we could make the show better for you I can't believe this is my hundredth time signing off but until next week all my love Jen Glance Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glance.